Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many more. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Joy and hail to you all. All right, folks. Hail and welcome. Get this out of my way. Hail and welcome back to uh, <clears throat> episode one of season three. Season three is finally officially kicked off here um, on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. And uh, I want to say thank you um, to, first of all, my friend Josh Kroom who provided the awesome intro music that you just heard. Um, Josh is uh, a very talented artist, musician, um, skilled outdoorsman. I've, I've featured him on the podcast here before, and he's been awesome enough to write a musical piece, especially for um, this channel, this podcast. And what you just heard is part of that. Uh, there will be more to come in the coming weeks. There'll be an announcement made uh, and most likely shared on my YouTube channel. So for uh, all of you folks out here that are listening and watching, please be sure to subscribe to the Midgard Musings uh, YouTube channel uh, because there will be something special where you get to hear the entire song. That was just, you know, maybe about half or so. It's not a very long piece, but I want to do something special with what, um, with, with what, uh, Josh wrote so <clears throat> very special thanks to him and thank you all uh, for coming back for another season season three <laughs> it's crazy to say that that um, you know this uh, this podcast has been going on now in its various forms um, it's kind of organically grown into what it's become now and looking forward to see what uh, season three holds for all of us um, for anyone that doesn't know um, if you follow me on any of my social medias and you haven't seen it um, check out Facebook, check out uh, Twitter uh, and Instagram. Yeah, it's posted on Instagram as well. Uh, and it's not posted on the YouTube channel. But in case you missed it, here's just a call to action. There's um, any guests looking to have their voice heard um, on the podcast here. Um, please email your submissions in uh, to MidgardAmusingsTN at gmail.com. And uh, we'll consider uh, getting in touch with you to discuss what you may want to talk about and what some of the conversation can uh, be had with some of the things that are on your mind. If you want to uh, share your thoughts with the world and become a guest on the podcast um, here in a future episode. So again, it's Midgard Musings TN at gmail.com. Feel free to, to write in and um, yeah, see what, uh, see what it is that you have to say. Uh, I don't have any guests uh, today um, and I'm actually recording this a couple of days late. Um, so for all of my YouTube channel members, apologies. Um, I'll get back on a regular cadence um, next week with our, you know, recording podcasts. And for all the YouTube channel members, you guys get first dibs um, before Thursdays. So if you are listening to this podcast now and you want to get the, uh, the version of the podcast before anybody else in the world does, you can become a YouTube channel member and um, that will allow you the uh the opportunity to catch this before it airs um on thursday mornings but <clears throat> i've been having some things go on 
um, <laughs> in true fashion, right? In true, uh, the way things just tend to normally go, right? When it, uh, when it rains, it pours, as they say. Um, but 2022 has kicked off and, and started off in a rather interesting sort of way. Um, so this is going to be a pretty heartfelt and passionate episode. I'm going to be talking about uh, some things today that um, may lose me some subscribers or lose me some followers or you guys uh, are, are entitled to your own thoughts and opinions about things. But, um, you know, I, I've, I've remained pretty silent about this particular topic or about this particular subject um, for about the last couple of years now. And um, things have just become uh, way too close to home for me to, you know, I wouldn't say stay silent, but uh, for me to just sort of, um, you know, not be vocal about it. And as you might suspect, <clears throat> say I've been quiet about it for the last couple of years. What could I possibly be referring to uh, other than this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic? So yeah, it's going to be one of those types of shows. Um, and I'm going to get pretty um, pointed and I'm going to get pretty, you know, unapologetic um, with the things that I've got to say about it. So if you are still interested in uh, sticking around for that, thank you so much. And if you're not and you want to bit, you know, dip out, <clears throat> that's fine. If you don't want to hear me ramble on uh, for the next however long you know, about this particular subject, I understand. Um, <clears throat> but it is something that I <clears throat> have to say and want to say. I'm going to be using my raspy voice to say it. So, um, you know, look, this whole this whole uh, global pandemic thing, this whole virus, whatever, um, pretty sore subject for a lot of uh, people. It's specifically when it comes to the vaccine and being vaccinated. Now, I am not a doctor. I am not a medical professional. I am not a scientist, um, and I don't buy into a lot of what the media says, but I do hear and I do see things from both sides of the spectrum, right? I do understand why people think that to get vaccinated is the way to go. And I understand why uh, people believe to be unvaccinated, um, that it doesn't matter and that, you know, this and that. <clears throat> what I'm going to be speaking on today is where I'm, where I've, I've come to, you know, kind of where I started out with my, 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 my thoughts on the whole thing. What led me into thinking the way that I think today and why I stand um, staunchly, you know, behind what I'm about to say. So as I sip on this delicious single malt Isle from Ardbeg, um, it's absolutely delicious, nice and, nice and smoky, nice and peaty. Um, so you know, let's 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 rewind a bit. <clears throat> let's rewind a bit to the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, when all of this crap hit the fan. Um, I guess it's probably the beginning of 2020 when we really started hearing about it in the news and in the media. You know, people were talking about it and it was getting attention. And next thing you know, you know, there were um, mandated, uh, I say curfews and, 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 you know, you can't go here, you can't go there. Stores are closed down. Businesses are being shut down. Blah, 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 blah. You know, <clears throat> people are dying and all this kind of stuff. And there has been a lot of, you know, uh, thoughts uh, around the world and from a lot of different people about this, this whole thing. I'm not going to get into that particularly. I'm going to be talking specifically about um, where I stood and where I currently stand and what led me uh, to this stance on just the, the overall, um, you know, views on, on keeping people safe, myself, my loved ones, and why. This is a heathen podcast, okay? I'm going to eventually get come back and circle around to to the to that aspect of it so just you know entertain me <laughs> bear with me as we go through this is you know settle in if you will get comfortable we'll get there um but you know beginning of 2020 when the world as we knew it changed entirely you know uh things that i never thought i would see in my lifetime things that if you're listening and watching uh that happened that you probably never 
would have thought that you would have seen in your lifetime and, and the, uh, the attention that it brought on um, focusing on family, focusing on your loved ones, focusing on your nearest and dearest and taking care of those close to you and taking care of yourself, taking care of your family, your, your home, like all these things came into a very, very uh, big spotlight during that time because people were scared and people were reacting out of fear um, and doing things that they normally wouldn't do because they were afraid. Right. So <clears throat> all of that was happening. And, um, you know, it was pretty much the proverbial, you know, uh, prepare for the worst, you know, stock up on things or, or make sure that you're um, rationing certain things because you don't know how long stores are going to be without, how, you know, what the direction of things are going to go in. Um, you don't want to get caught with your pants down, like, you know, all these kind of preparatory measures um, that we would take. And it was it was basically almost like, you know, the, you know, you see in a lot of like these movies or whatever where, where there crap's going on outside and people are frantic and everybody's like reaching out and shutting their windows and bolting their doors and all that. That's kind of what it was um, for, for, for me and, and the closest ones to me, you know. We, we got what we needed. We took the precautions and we did the things that we needed to stay put for a while. And we, we stayed uh, vigilant just in case anything went sideways. And I'm sure a lot of people did. Um, you know, and then over the months of, you know, summer of 2020 and whatnot, you know, we start seeing things happening where, uh, you know, it, 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 it gets crazier, you know, and then we start seeing eventually that, Oh, well, let's, uh, you know, let's wear masks, let's do all these things. And that's a whole topic in and of itself where, you know, uh, it's, you know, my body, my choice, um, you know, you can't make me wear a mask. And uh, it's just like, you know, my body, my choice, you can't, uh, you know, make me va get vaccinated. It's my choice to do it if I want. You can't tell me that I should have to do this to, to go places, this and that. So we start seeing all that take place, you know, and I, I, I was... When, you know, things started to, quote unquote, open back up, you know what I'm saying? When, you know, you could go to a restaurant, when you could go to the stores a bit more freely or whatever. And there was, you know, you have to wear your mask. And there was people there that were doing their best and they're doing their jobs or whatever to enforce those rules. I had no problem with wearing the mask, you know, and, and did for the longest time. You know, not going to get into what, you know the science behind it and does it work or not. It's like, look, man, you know, you're part of this world and, you know, to, to, to go certain places and to do certain things, if you want to play the game, you got to play by the rules. And, um, you know, it's not me going, um, you know, I'm, I'm being the sheep. I'm just doing what I'm being told. It's like, I got to go get certain things. And if I need to wear a piece of paper across my face to go do it, I'll be fine. You'll all, you know, we'll all be fine if, if we just shut up and do it. Right. No big deal. Um, you know, and they say, oh, well, that's where it starts. You know, they, they ask you this, they tell you to do that. And the next thing you know, it's boom, they got you, they got you by the balls, you know, as they say, or whatever. And I'm like, I don't, I don't buy into that whole, um, what you call it conspiracy theories of, you know, government control and whatnot. I just don't. So anyway, we, uh, we get to the point where, you know, 2020 is wrapping up. And, uh, you know, we, we, we start seeing things get more relaxed and then we see all these different um, <clears throat> variants of the virus appear. Uh, 2021 was, you know, probably, uh, you know, like 2020 continued a bit in that, in that arena. You know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, crazy stuff with, with travel restrictions and, um, you know, you can't fly unless you're vaccinated. You can't go into a music venue. People are getting refused business, right? Like you, you can't come here. You can't participate in this event unless you're vaccinated or unless you show proof of a negative test results and all this other kind of stuff. <clears throat> and people are getting all up in arms um, about it. You know, that's not fair. You can't do that. Listen, blah, blah, blah. You know, thinking of just themselves thinking of just themselves and, and, the, and, and, and the inconvenience of, um, you know, not being able to just do what they want the way they want to do it. You know, you're, you're infringing on my rights and all this other kind of stuff. You know, nobody's infringing on your rights. It's just that they need to, you, again, play, play, play the game. You got to play by the rules. So um, I guess it was about 
mid 2021, right? It, it wasn't like right as soon as they came out with this vaccine information, right? Which is considering how young this variant of, of, of COVID is and, and of, of the flu virus or whatever you want to call it, like how, however new this virus is, right? The vaccine, as they call it, that was, that was, that's been presented the, the Moderna, the Pfizer, the Johnson and Johnson, the whatever, right? It's all very, very, very new stuff. And I understand where a lot of people are apprehensive and like, no, I'm not going to take that jab. I'm not going to take the jab. I'm not going to um, get poked or whatever for something that, you know, they haven't had enough years and years and years and years and years and years of testing to prove, right? So I was very skeptical of, of taking the vaccine. And that, 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 that is largely due to um, my, my upbringing, you know? Um, and, and how I was born and raised and the kind of an, uh, you know, environment that I was raised in. Um, not a lot of focus or, or attention or, or value placed on medical doctors and physicians and things like that. It was, we, you know, we, we, we approach things in a very natural and, and holistic um, fashion, you know, a lot of Eastern medicine um, practices and stuff. So, you know, no synthetic drugs, no, you know, shots. So I wouldn't even take so much as an aspirin for a headache or an ibuprofen for a headache. Nothing like that from all of my life, um, all of my youth, at least into my, you know, <clears throat> early 20s. So there was that. There was, all, there was like that, that, that little thing that hung on the back of my mind where I'm like, you know, I don't need this vaccine. My body will naturally um, build up antibodies for this thing from being exposed. You know, that's how you build up immunities to things. That's how your body is designed to function, right? You're, you're, you're exposed to certain things, you get sick. And then your body at the time is figuring out what to do to fix you, uh, fix, you fix the parts that are broken, you know, get you better, heal you. And uh, so you, you build up immunities, you build up uh, antibodies um, against certain things, you know? I, I grew up working on farms and, and working out in nature all the time, you know, climbing uh, people's homes, repairing chimneys, installing wood stoves, uh, all these kinds of outdoor, you know, mowing yards, shoveling snow. Like I was outdoors all the time. I was exposed to a lot of things growing up um, that I feel just helped condition me into being a, a relatively healthy um, young adult and into, and into my uh, later adult years where I'm now, mid, mid, mid adult years. So I didn't think that the vaccine, I needed to do it. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I just, you know, not worried about it. I'm, I'm, if I get it, I get it. And it's whatever, it's whatever. And I was very singular. It was very, it was a very singular focus. It was a very selfish focus. If you think about it, right? Well, I'm fine. It's not going to hurt me. I'm healthy. Me, 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 you know, I'll be fine. Blah, blah, blah. Well, because I'm heathen, because I'm a, a heathen that, that, that follows what the path that I do, right? A large part, <clears throat> in fact, maybe one of the biggest parts of my belief structure and the way that I believe is that um, tribe is, is where the, the heart of heathen relies, right? The heart of heathen relies at the tribal level, at the grass roots level. And what that means is that there is more to my existence than just me. There is um, the people that are near to me, my wife, uh, her parents, uh, our near and dear friends, our extensions of family, right? Our kith and our kin, um, other clans that we share and tie weird with that make up our tribe. And The, the, as soon as I started to sit back and realize that it's not just about me, it's about, and, and protecting me, it's, it's not just, it's not about that. It's about them. And it's about doing what is best for them. You know, and we see examples of, of this, probably most famously in, in, in uh, the lore with regards to like Tyr and how Tyr is seen as a god of justice, right action, and sacrifice, and sacrifice 
uh, that is done for the greater good, for the good of the tribe. You know, Odin himself was, was, is, is known for sacrificing himself to himself. And yes, that is a sacrifice. He gives up, um, you know, he gave an eye uh, at the well, uh, in Mimir's well, to, to receive that wisdom or that knowledge. I mean, he hangs himself from Yggdrasil for nine days and nights to receive the power and the knowledge of the runes. Um, so there's a sacrifice, but it's a, it's, a, it's a sacrifice of himself to himself for something that, yes, you can argue and say that throughout the lore and in, in the stories that, that, that those gifts, those things were used to help the Aesir and help his tribe. Um, but they were very much gifts to him for him, like things that he would benefit from greatly. You know, now look at Tyr, look at the sacrifice that Tyr gave. The thing that he had to sacrifice was his hand. He had nothing to gain by losing his hand other than uh, retaining his honor, paying that shield, paying that debt, as it were, paying that recompense um, for allowing the wolf to be, to be bound. And, you know, it was a pretty deep thing if you think about it. But, you know, the gift that... Uh, or, the, or the, the, the gift that that's this, that sacrifice that, that Tyr gave. Um, and I'm not trying to compare myself to the gods, um, but it's almost like to me, you know, if I had nothing but myself to consider, then I wouldn't care and I wouldn't have gotten vaccinated. But because I had um, others to consider, right? If I'm going to be around other people, if I'm going to be around my elderly in laws, if I'm going to be around my infant nieces and nephews. You know, if I'm going to be around other people in the community to try to build, build more on our tribe to, 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 uh, to nurture and grow our community in our area, then it would require me to, you know, again, take that, put myself out of the equation, put myself out of the equation for others. So as soon as I started thinking of that, and I'll never forget this, uh, but as soon as I started thinking of that, my whole approach to things changed. You know, it was, it was like, I'm not, I'm not so concerned about me getting this, this virus or whatever anymore, but I am concerned about being a carrier of it and potentially hurting, harming, or um, yeah, hurting or harming someone else that I love and I care about. So once that happened, like I said, I never forget it, it, it changed my entire approach. It changed my entire view on, on this whole thing. It wasn't so much about what does the media say? What is the, you know, the, the, you know, what does Fauci say? What does, you know, the WHO say? What is, what do all these organizations say? What does the media say? None of that matters, right? None of that mattered, but <clears throat> a large portion of, a large portion of, you know, the information that, that we were receiving is that this will not prevent you from getting the virus. That's not what this is about. It's not going to prevent you from getting it, but it would uh, lower the chances of uh, spreading it, and when it does get spread, or as it does get spread, as you as you do carry it, the the the, the impact that it has would be way less severe than if you were unvaccinated. You know, and I and I also took the approach as okay, what harm is it coming to me? What harm is it doing to me to to, to get vaccinated? None. I I'm a healthy individual, right? I understand there are some people who have pre-existing, you know, they are immunocompromised. They have other things that could potentially put them at risk, higher risk of getting, you know, uh, getting the vaccine uh, versus not getting the vaccine and just staying isolated and staying away. I understand that. Take all those things into consideration as we, as we, as I'm talking about this and as you're listening, you know, my, my condition, my, my stance on it was that I am a healthy, uh, hearty individual who has nothing to lose from, you know, from, from taking this, but I have everything to gain for my people, for my loved ones um, for taking it. And if I don't take it, then it's a neglect on my part of their safety. So I, uh, you know, went through the double jabs, you know, did the Pfizer one, whatever. Um, and that was, like I said, in the mid, mid, mid 2021, something like it was last year. I think it was, yeah, it was in the summertime because I remember it was hot. Um, matter of fact, my second round, my second dose, um, I didn't have a ride to get to the place where I was going to, to get vaccinated, to get the second dose. So I walked, I walked there. Um, it was about 
five miles round trip, maybe nothing long. But anyway, that happened. That was at the end of August, beginning of September when I got my second dose. And so here we are now, very beginning of 2022. We just had our families, my wife's side of the family had their Christmas celebration, family dinner, whatever, the end of December, of course. Um, our, uh, my mother-in-law, my, my wife's mother, her birthday was, was uh, either the day before New Year's Eve or New Year's Eve, something like December 30th, right around there. Had big, we had a dinner, you know? And then just a few days ago, we get a group text message from my sister-in-law saying that um, her and her husband have both tested positive for COVID and that everybody needs to get tested. Everybody, including my wife, myself, uh, her cousin, her nephews, niece, her elderly mother and father. Um, and so here we go, right? We, we all start making those arrangements and stuff. As it stands right now, um, her father has COVID. Her nephew has COVID. Her mother may, we're not sure yet, waiting for the test result to come back. I'm, I'm not sure yet because I'm waiting for my test results to come back. My wife was rapid tested. She did the rapid test and stuff, and she's fortunately was negative. Um, but they say that the rapid tests, right, are um, not always uh, 100% accurate. And so they always send them off to the lab just for that second test, right, to make sure that, uh, that, they, that they got it. So, you know, wait to see in a couple of days uh, when the test results come back what that says. So, you know, by the time you're listening to this, things may change. But as it stands right now, several members of our family who are all, by the way, who are all fully vaccinated, um, have the virus. Now, one could say, yeah, you see, the vaccine doesn't do jack squat. You know what I mean? Getting the shot doesn't matter. You still got it. Well, true. Never once said that the vaccine was going to prevent you from getting it. You know? Okay, let's look at the definition of what a vaccine is. Like, da, 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 da. You can read Webster's Dictionary all day long, right? Fact of the matter is, is like whether you get it or not, well, you know, whether you're vaccinated or not, whether you get it, it's going to depend on a lot of things, how severe the, the, uh, the reactions that you're going to have are. Um, you guys have been listening to my voice over the last couple of weeks um, on the podcast, and it's raspy. Who knows if I got it? I don't think I do because I don't feel any other sort of way. I've just got this cough. I don't have a fever. My throat's not scratchy. It's just this upper respiratory thing. And this is indicative uh, of, of, of what usually happens to me this time of year in Tennessee because it goes from 75 degrees one day to 40, 30 degrees the next day. And it's this temperature flux. It's bipolar as heck. And, you know, you're, you're, you're bound to get upper respiratory illnesses and stuff. It's like it, Tennessee is the worst state to to um be subject to to things that will mess with you like that right so anyway why am i bringing all this up what does this have to do with heathenry you ask or what does it have to do with anything to, you know heathen views on whatever i mentioned before about the importance of community and that for me Heathenry is going to thrive and continue to, 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 to live and thrive at the tribal level. And that tribe is everything. And that tribe needs to be, um, needs to grow out of your family, out of your kin, out of your kith. That's where tribe comes from. It's an organic growth out of those things that are already established. You have to nurture it. I mean, you can't, you can't nurture something that is dying and you can't, you know, uh, have that kind of growth if you don't have the opportunity to nurture it. And so I looked at it as this, right? I can't meet new people. I can't be a part of things in the community if I'm not taking precautions to the best of my ability, you know? And for me, getting vaccinated was the, the best of my ability to keep other people around me safe, not just myself, because I could care less, but I want to keep everyone else as safe as I can. And I don't want to be the one that, you know, is responsible for 
infecting others. Now, <clears throat> this is where it get this is where it's going to get a bit heated um, on my part because when we were over at my you know in laws place during the holidays and when we had our dinner, they knew they knew that they had been exposed. At least my sister in law did. She knew that she had been exposed to somebody at her job who tested positive and who had COVID. And she refrained from telling us until just the other day, like two days ago. You know, so for the last week and a half, we've all been floating around, hugging on each other, wishing each other happy holidays, happy new year, happy birthday, this and that, right? Without any knowledge about it, except for her, she knew. And she kept that from the family. She kept that from us, you know? And I can't say for sure why someone would have such a blatant disregard of common sense to say something that important to your family, to your family, to your loved ones. You stand there and you hug me and you tell me that you love me. And then you refrain from telling me and the rest of us that you've been exposed to COVID. Not knowing if you got it yet, but that you've been exposed. Don't you think in the, in the freaking base common sense of everybody's skull, the, 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 the basic things that, that allow us to you know, be more intelligent than apes, that you would tell somebody this, that you would tell them that it's possible, I have COVID, I've been exposed, let's not have a holiday dinner. Let's not have a big dinner with everybody for the birthday. Let's postpone it. Let's just not do it. Whatever. You know? What kind of idiot do you have to be? What kind of mental case are you to keep that information from your loved ones? And you have the audacity to stand there, look me in the eye, look me in the face, embrace me, and tell me that you love me. That isn't love. You know, I don't care if you, knew, I don't care if, if you were waiting to see if you were positive or not, waiting for the test results to come back because that ain't no good enough excuse, man. That's not a good enough excuse. I'm going to tell you right now, my tribe in 10 days has our Yola Beitzu, our Yule feast, our annual Yule feast coming up. And if me or anybody else that's coming, was exposed to COVID and knows about it, they're gonna know we're not gonna have our thing. We're not gonna have our get together. That's just it, right? Because I'm not going to put anybody at risk. I'm not gonna put anybody in harm's way just for the sake of a party. And it's an important one, right? It's more than just a party. It's, it's, it's a very important, pivotal thing for us. But I'm not gonna put anyone at risk you know, if, you know, and to, look, fact of the matter is, I don't know if I have it. I could get a call tomorrow or an email tomorrow or Friday, you know, whenever. And, uh, and it says that you, you tested positive. You got a quarantine for 10 days or whatever. Guess what? You'll, you are not doing our Yule thing, guys. Sorry. We'll postpone it. We'll move it to the week after. We'll have it after. Whatever the case may be, we'll, we'll do what we need to keep people safe. But I'm not going to keep that from people just so we can have our get together. You know how irresponsible it is, how, how much of a breach of frith that that is? I've talked about frith on this podcast a number of times before, right, guys? And I've said that frith is more than just being all happy-go-lucky, peace and love, and, and getting along. Frith is about trust. Frith is about obligation. Frith is about love, and it's about maintaining peace, but it's about all those other things that I already mentioned that you are obligated to each other like that. Like it's, it's, it's like an unspoken, an unspoken rule. <laughs> it's an unspoken oath almost, you know, that, that you will do what it takes to keep the frith and, and to maintain that frith. And what a freaking breach of frith was this, man, to, 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 and I just can't get away from realizing that I was standing there giving you a hug. You gave me a hug. You told me you loved me. And I told you that I loved you. 
and you knew that you were exposed, that you didn't have the common sense, you didn't have the, the mental presence to tell us ahead of time, and now look what's happened. You got your family infected. Your 74-year-old, 73, 74-year-old father is ill. And as we all know, this particular sickness, it can be pretty rough on the elderly. You know, your, your young nephew is sick. My wife watches children, runs a daycare. She could have been exposed. She could have gotten those kids sick. We don't know what those kids that she watches, the kind of immuno uh, compromises that, that, that they, they, they may have, right? See how it all trickles down? And all for what? All because you don't want to miss a holiday dinner? And again, I can't say that that was the case. I can't say that she consciously was like, oh, I better not say anything until I know. Or if she was just so stupid that she didn't realize it. I'm thinking it's probably the latter. But, um, man. So the whole thing, like, well, how does this, you know, relate to heathenry or whatever? That's how it relates to heathenry. You look out for your people. You look out for your tribe. You look out for your clan. You look out for your folk. You look out for your people. You take care of them. And you do the thing that is going to be safe for them, even if it means a sacrifice for yourself. And uh, I mean, you know, this, this, is, <clears throat> this is one of those things, man, where when Frith is breached, you know, there's always now what, you know, can it be repaired? Can the damage that was done be fixed? Is there anything that can be done to uh, remedy this and, and, and mend that, that torn thread? And when you talk about stuff like this, I mean, I don't know. And now some people may say, you know, well, you're overreacting, Jesse, you know, you're overreacting. Everybody's, you know, you're going to get sick and you, you know, things are going to happen. I get that. I understand. As a matter of fact, I firmly believe that this virus is going to just be like another annual flu thing, right? Just like you can get the option to take your flu shot every year, take the flu vaccine every year. This is going to be that. You're going to get the option to be vaccinated every year for COVID, just like you can for the flu, just for the, for the common flu. This ain't going anywhere. So when you say, oh, I'm just going to get it, and then I'll build up, my, my body will build natural antibody, antibodies to you know, combat the virus. Sure, go right ahead. I mean, I don't get the flu vaccine every year. Matter of fact, I can't tell you the last time I, was, uh, I opted to get the flu vaccine. It's, it's been that long, decades, I would say. You know, um, at, least, at least over a decade. I don't remember the last time I got the flu vaccine. Have I ever gotten the flu? Not that I know of. I've had pneumonia a couple of times in my life. You know, as a very young child or infant as a child, and then once in my adult years, I was walking pneumonia. <clears throat> and hell, that could be what I got right now. I don't know. I don't go get checked out. I just take care of myself the best that I can. That's me. But I also, you know, went to get tested when I found out that I was exposed to something that could potentially be spread to others and impact them negatively, hurt them, people that I love, people that I want to be, you know, continuing my life with and preserving my life with, right? So I guess what I'm trying to say is, first of all, don't be an idiot. And if you've been exposed or you think you've been exposed or somebody around you said, hey, I've, I've been exposed too, let your people know, right? Don't be complacent about this whole thing. Let your people know, get tested. It's free. You know, you may wait in line. You may have to get a, make an appointment, right? But just check yourself, get yourself checked for the love of the people around you, for the well-being of, of your loved ones. And if all you've got 
is yourself and you don't care. I mean, everybody's free to do what they want. I'm not sitting here telling anybody that they have to do one thing or the other. I'm not. I'm just giving you guys my insight, my perspective on this whole thing and how pissed off I've been over. And it's, and it's been a while since I've been this royally mad about something. Um, just because I don't let things get to me too badly. But when it comes to tribe, man, when it comes to my family, when it comes to kin, and when it comes to that sort of thing, it, I get fighting mad about it. You know? And the crazy thing is, you know, this whole group text that's going around with, uh, with, with members of the family, you know, the person who's the reason why we're all in this predicament to begin with is trying to tell people what to do to get, I'll take your vitamin C, drink plenty of water, get out, walk around and shut up. It's your fault that we're here. It's your fault that we're doing this. How about you sit down and learn a thing or two yourself instead of trying to tell other people what to do? You got no freaking right, you know? And I'm not apologetic about that. People might be like, oh, you know, you got to go easy. You know, it was a mistake. We've been dealing with this thing for the last two years now almost. Where's your common sense? Where's your brain at? Where's your head? Or not thinking. You know, it's stuff like this where I feel that um, shame is, 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 is absolutely warranted. You know, she should be ashamed of herself and she should be felt. She should be made to feel shame. So there it is. There's my harsh um, <laughs> first podcast of, of, of season three. What a way to kick it off, huh? What a way to kick it off. So let's end it on a good note, right? <clears throat> what has happened recently that um, we can end on, on a good note with? Like I said, Yolavetsu is coming up. Our, our tribe's Yule feast. We, we hold our Yule celebration um, around the traditional historical Yule. When I say traditional historical, I'm talking about when the Germanic tribes celebrated Yule that we know of historically prior to the Christianization period, prior to the Viking Age, prior to when um, Scandinavia and all these other Germanic areas were converted to Christianity. When, when <clears throat> during the, like, the time of Hawken the Good, when, when, when Yule was moved to December 25th, time way before then. So we hold our Yule as close to the historical date of when Yule was held. And <clears throat> briefly, right, um, Yule was held on the first full moon after the, uh, sorry, the third full moon after the, what is it? It was held on the third full moon after the last uh, new moon of a winter solstice. So but, but that makes sense. I'm going to have to read it again. But basically, when uh, Winter Nights, when Winter Nights was held, typically sometime in around October, November, somewhere around there, when that full moon hit, um, after that new moon, it was three full moons thereafter. So it falls on a different, it's, it's, it's lunar based, right? So it falls on a different day um, every year. I think last year it was... Um, towards the end of January. And then this year it's January, the full moon falls on January uh, 17th, which is like a Monday or something during the week. It's weird. So we're holding ours, going to be planning to hold ours, uh, our Yule feast on, uh, on the 15th, which is a weekend. It's a Saturday. Yes. It's a couple of days before the full moon, but we're close enough. We're right around that. And the weekend just works better for everybody. Um, in modern day, in modern times, you know, in, in modern day, we got to kind of work around each other's, you know, busy lives, work schedules, when and where you can get time off, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so, uh, and we're going to have, you know, um, a bloat of sorts um, to the gods before our feast. And then after feast, we typically will, you know, do some gift giving and then sumble. We hold a sumble ritual where we um, allow, um, members of the tribe to, you know, give toasts, 
boasts and if they cho choose oaths um, around the horn or around the, the, the cup. Um, we do ours a little bit differently than maybe other people do. Um, but uh, we, we, we have a pretty solid structure and uh, uh, to our symbol. And um, is it exactly 100% like uh, symbol was held historically? No, not exactly. Um, but the reason that we don't 100% keep to that particular thing is because of the members of the tribe who are involved uh, to that capacity, you know, that, that are maybe just not comfortable with um, being a part of it in that sort of way. So we find other ways around it. Um, but it is, you know, it is, we, we do keep it indoors, which is kind of a requirement for Sumble. You, you have to be indoors. We do have a central cup or horn that we, um, you know, work over, speak over that sort of thing. Um, we've done it a couple different ways over the years, but the last year we had really good success, um, with the way that we did it. And we're going to continue that. We're going to make a slight modification to it this, this year. Um, but it's going to be done in a way that kind of is a nod, um, or an homage to the historical, historically documented way of how it was done. Um, I did a podcast actually a long time ago, like during season one, when things weren't even, when it, before it was random heathen ramblings, it was just, oh, I want to make a podcast and I'm just going to, you know, call it Midgard Musings, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I did something on Sumble a while back. Um, matter, so if you like go through my, uh, my catalog, my, my podcast catalog, and um, you'll have to do that. It's like, it's not here on YouTube, but it's, it's, it's in all the other podcast platforms. If you just look through there and it's like, it's how to stumble. Um, and that's like a part one, two, or three. I think it's, it's at least a two part, um, podcast, um, check it out. It's there. There are some things that I need to probably go back and revisit, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close after consulting with some very reputable sources that, that know the, the, the source material, you know, um, on how Sumbo was done historically and having those uh, books themselves. Some of those, some of the material, like, you know, Lady, uh, the Lady with the Mead Cup um, and uh, the Mead Hall. Some of those books are really hard to come by or if you can find them, they're like astronomical in, in their price. Um, but anyway, rambled on a bit longer than I expected to about that. But anyways, that's some good things that we have looking forward to uh, coming up assuming everybody is healthy and able to, to attend safely, you know, so we're going to do that. Um, my wife and I uh, just finished giving each other our gifts earlier this evening that we had under our tree. Uh, we still have, you know, members of the tribes gifts there for our event that we're going to give to them. But um, I got some nice beard oil. I, I could use all the help <laughs> that I can get. Uh, so she got me some nice, you know, beard oils. Um, she got me Beowulf, the, the, the saga, Beowulf, the saga. Uh, she got me a book uh, that I've been wanting for quite some time. It's called Land Noma Book. Um, it's about the, uh, the settlers and, and uh, in Iceland and, and stuff. And, and it's a really reputable source material for understanding like the land claiming, land taking ceremonies, things that were done pr prior to, to Christian times in Iceland and, and, and some of the historical foundings of, of Iceland and, and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Got this really neat um, Funko Pop uh, thing. Um, not a big collector by any means, but uh, Lemmy, Lemmy Kilmeister from Motorhead, right? She got me it's like this bronze Funko Pop thing um, that she got me. She also got me this really awesome resin burner charcoal resin burner and it, with, with a wide variety of different resins you know frankincense myrrh and pine and palo santo and a lot of different beautiful uh you know scented uh resins and things i'm going to be using to you know for meditation for for rituals for that sort of thing um and so yeah it was it, it's been a really nice you know way to kind of ring in that uh good season for us here with our tribe you know so we did that 
And then we got our, our Yule Feast thing to look forward to. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and just call it that. Let's just, just call that season three, episode one. Uh, my rants on on the whole COVID thing and, and, and chewing my sister-in-law a new one. I'm probably not going to let that one go for a while. <clears throat> but uh, suffice it to say, um, ended on a good note. So um, again, guys, stay, uh, keep your eyes peeled. Stay, subscribe to the YouTube channel for um, when the rest of that song that you hear at the intro of the podcast, when the rest of that song gets released, we'll be hopefully be in the coming weeks i'm not exactly sure yet there's some other people involved that i need to coordinate uh time and stuff with um to do what we want to do for you to hear the rest of this song so uh, whether it's you know weeks from now or a month from now it's, it'll be very soon like it is it's, it's on the agenda of things to do very soon um and i'm really looking forward to having you all hear it uh, big thanks again to to Josh Kroom um, and your project Skogamar for for writing this piece, man. It was it's awesome. It, it captures everything about this channel, this podcast, beautifully. Um, and I think what we have planned to uh, to reveal in, uh, the entire song uh, is going to also help you not just listen to the song and and, and feel what we're feeling, but visually capture the emotion behind it all. So very excited about that. Um, in the meantime, you all uh, hopefully uh, are enjoying your new year and staying safe and healthy yourselves. Until we talk again, Hale, thank you so much for your support. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, however it is that you're able to support this podcast uh, monetarily. Check the link tree notes or link tree link in the show notes and description area for the various ways that you can support this podcast. Um, and everything that I do here on Midgard Musing. So thank you all again. Hail, until we talk again, and the gods and your ancestors continue to walk with you. Bye-bye.